Typhoon Canoon continues and Hurricane Dora features in the Eastern Pacific on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 3rd. So, the Eastern Pacific revving up in the form of Hurricane Dora, a tiny system that appears to be rapidly strengthening right now. And Canoon is still on its slow descent from its peak intensity, still uh, borderline category 3 at this point. We are code orange for it and several other systems to look out for. Day 64 of the Atlantic, and whilst those two invests that were active uh, haven't impressed, we've now marked another area of interest that's going to be forming possibly uh, through the uh, east, just off the coast of Africa, moving through the eastern Atlantic. 20% on that. Dora moving across the eastern Pacific, still category 2 at this point, 110 miles per hour, according to the last National Hurricane Center advisory. 50% behind it still for another area of interest, but the models are flip-flopping a little bit on that one, so a half chance. Canoon still moving gradually towards the west. We expect it will turn round pretty soon now and a 30% area of interest which will branch off to its east already starting to do so and could become a tropical cyclone for maybe eastern Japan. Tropical Storm 4B is now remnant low but is still traceable over eastern India uh, and that is still producing a lot of rainfall as well. We could still see up to 200 millimeters of further rainfall in northern and central India from the remnants of that storm. Satellite imagery in the last 24 hours looks like this. You can clearly see Canoon's influence there, but also 4B and a few little spots there of extremely heavy rain denoted in those red areas. Also, uh, a little wave there moving into the eastern Pacific as well might be that one that we're tracking that invest. Uh, a few red spots there. Well, here is Canoon on the latest imagery, and it's not looking as good as it used to, obviously. The eye is clouding over um, and parts of the eye wall looks like that they may be starting to fragment a little bit cloud tops aren't really as high as they used to be either only a few little areas of minus 70 degree cloud tops in the eye wall and so it would really be a borderline category 3 on satellite imagery here there it is actually showing itself a little bit better with the cloud tops there more minus 70s but uh, in general it is starting to struggle with the eye clouding over and i think we could see a collapse of the system's structure uh, if if it does stall which it sort of already is we look at this radar imagery really fascinating to watch those concentric concentric eye walls still can't speak today uh, gradually moving towards the west northwest there now here's Dora with an eye really starting to appear in those latest frames really shows how small the storm is and a very small eye in there as well is it pinhole I'm not sure it must be close to that threshold but you can clearly see that it started to appear in those last few frames leading many people to think that it will be a category 4 by tomorrow morning and to be honest I don't think I can disagree with that wide shot of the radar view there for Canoon uh, with uh, it is quite far away from the radars the center of the storm so so I reckon it looks a little bit better than what that radar is giving it credit for. Sea surface temperatures off the coast of Mexico continue to expand in their warmth over 30 degrees Celsius where Dora is right now it's around 28 to 29. Gulf of Mexico piping hot across the board 30 degrees plus across the whole region now across southern Florida and into the western Atlantic so very warm temperatures across large parts of the Atlantic right now mostly above average and even in the open ocean things are looking good really uh, ready for significant tropical developments. Western Pacific, a few little cool spots after Canoon's passage there in the subtropical, subtropical zone. Further out to sea though, in the lower latitudes, very warm water, still over 30 degrees, hot spots near the Northern Marianas and in the South China Sea, but also off the north coast of Japan warming up there too. Bay of Bengal still looking okay after the passage of that tropical storm. It's still around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, Arabian Sea generally pretty cool, but you can clearly see some of these seas off the Arabian Peninsula extremely warm. 
Uh, southwestern Indian Ocean still cooling a little bit further towards its minimum and in the Australian region a similar story there as well a few spots below 26 degrees off Australia's top end through Indonesia and in the South Pacific also temperatures still gradually cooling off. Anomalies compared to average, you can clearly see the two recent typhoon tracks in that, putting the temperatures around 2 degrees below where Canoon was, uh, but in general it still remains decent. Eastern Pacific below average in the um, large area between Hawaii and the American continent, but east there near the coastline uh, of Central America still looking very warm above average. Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico is only a little bit above average now, around 2 degrees, but the Central Atlantic still looking very warm around 3 degrees above. Oceanic heat content is extremely high for the most parts of the Caribbean Sea that matter into the Gulf of Mexico and around the Bahamas. Extremely warm conditions uh, and good favorable conditions for storm development. Eastern Pacific, still a few spots there as well. Dora will be uh, benefiting from just a little bit. Western Pacific off the boil in the west there, but in the east it's still looking good. Computer models then, this is the GFS up to the next five days. Uh, looking at this new Atlantic system, which is really just thrown up in the last few hours on the GFS model run. Other models aren't so sure that this will develop, but one or two do have surface lows. So that's why we've given it a 20% chance. If we were using just the GFS, it would be much higher because right now it actually forms a tropical storm within in three days uh, but we know that it can cry wolf a lot uh, so wouldn't be sure on that happening just yet Eastern Pacific, there's Dora heading out towards the west and GFS thinks it's near its peak intensity already. Satellite imagery certainly shows that that's not the case. The GFS will probably play catch up on that. And another system, also quite a small one, moving up towards the northwest as well. That's the one that we've tagged at 50%. It only ends up forming around day three or four by the looks of things. There it is off the coast of Mexico, gets quite close to the coast. Needs to watch out there for potential tropical storm impacts, but gradually moves out to sea. Dora should remain south of Hawaii. Why? Canoon watching its movement here, it's stalling and then it starts to drift eastwards and then maybe northeastwards as it passes close to Okinawa once again as probably a category one and then turns towards the north very slowly and back west again actually, another stalling motion there. So really, really slowing down uh, and dumping huge amounts of rain. That second system off to the right hand side as well, GFS is pretty confident on it, other models still not so much but it becomes a significant storm there as well reaching typhoon status. So let's take a look once again at the rainfall estimates from uh, this storm and we are looking <clears throat> once again at some fairly extraordinary rainfall amounts. We're now looking at possibly northern Okinawa for the epicenter of the highest rainfall amounts. You can see the storm doing its second stalling motion there which really piles on those rainfall amounts. Over Taiwan, first of all, nearly 20 inches, 500 millimeters. In the southern Ryukyus, maybe getting to 12 inches, 300 millimeters. But over Okinawa, over 40 inches of rainfall, probably 1100 millimeters. And in some isolated spots at sea, possibly getting to 60 inches of rainfall there. That would be 1500 millimeters of rain on top of what we've already seen so far, of course, with the storm passing very close to Okinawa once already. In the longer range, the Eastern Pacific shows off these two hurricanes, Dora passing well to the south of Hawaii and continuing to churn along, moving pretty much due west, low latitude. The second system dies off, it looks like it actually uh, turns a little bit towards back towards the Americas, but actually is pretty dead by the time it's doing that. And then that, of course, Dora following that one again, and maybe another little low forming ahead of it there, which would be very curious to see. Must be a really low latitude, but Dora moving off there, degenerating into a remnant low, probably around the international dateline. Canoon then starts to move, where does it move? Southwest, northwest, northeast, goodness knows where. That second system becomes a powerful typhoon there and shoots off to the east. And then Canoon finally moves north through the gap between Japan and Korea and along the east coast of South Korea and towards Russia in the end there, uh, potentially still as a tropical system. Certainly could turn out to be a historic storm track and one that will be baffling. Uh, scholars for many years to come if that turns out to be the case you can talk about all of that wait we're not up to that part yet you can take a look at the Force City merch store scan the barcode and it'll take you straight there and you can also uh, 
get our Still Waiting for Hone t-shirt because they're still very much in fashion. In the Silly Range then we are looking back at the Atlantic. Not sure whether it's part of this initial system that we've tagged or whether it's a new one but towards the end of the period here day 10 to 16 it's quite far out a tropical storm developing there harassing the outer banks and then moving off towards the northeast becoming a hurricane there in those high latitudes. Uh, quite far out we're talking 13th 14th of August at least so I wouldn't put any um, chances on that happening just yet uh, but it looks like August in the Atlantic at least the first part is looking out to be relatively quiet Western Pacific then those storms moving off uh, a landfall in Russia there and that second system becomes an enormous extra tropical storm through the um, into the uh, I've forgotten the name of that area up there now well towards the northeast and then maybe a third system there one that's struggling to get its organization uh, sorted out uh, but eventually this other system moving along the Alaskan Peninsula as a very strong extratropical low the Bering Sea is what I wanted to say before there uh, but trailing along the Alaskan Peninsula as a extratropical storm you can talk about all of that on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat, and general chat of any kinds, with over 3,500 members from around the world. On this day, it was August 3rd, 1995, when we saw a significant cyclone landfall. It was Hurricane Erin, which made landfall along the Florida pan uh, Panhandle, very close to the border with Alabama as a Category 2. There it is, pictured. We also had Tropical Depression 6E, which had formed and would become a tropical storm later on. And I forget which one that is now. I had the name to hand earlier. Um, so I'll let you guys do that part of the research. Elsewhere, nothing else was active at this point in time. All eyes were on Erin. Back to today, the next name in the Atlantic is still Emily. Some people might be shocked at that. In the Eastern Pacific, Dora means four hurricanes in a row. The next name is Eugene. And in the Central Pacific, of course, we are still waiting for Hone for the fourth year in a row. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Lan. In the North Indian Ocean, we are still waiting for Tej because it's the second time now I think that we've had a designated, that we've designated a tropical storm that didn't get named by the IMD. So interesting there. Southern Hemisphere, next name the Australian region Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and the South Pacific, the next name is Lola. That's all for tonight. We'll be back again with another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.